Well, several days later and many, many, many interruptions later, I got to continue on the back end here. Well, good morning, guys. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks, and I think this is gonna be part of episode number 17. Was well, supposed to be gone at King of the Hammers this week and had some things come up and with the family. So, family first, here we are. Able to get a couple hours in on this thing today. I've got the race going on the TV right now. And, uh, yeah, today's desert race day. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to get, get all of my holes drilled in these tubes here for my plug welds, get these tubes prepped for this, this seam weld here and here, both driver and passenger side. And then after that, go into, uh, getting these joints done and work on putting these brace tubes in for this tail section. I have everything I need now to go ahead and start marking up or mocking up the front end, but uh, I'm already kind of started on this. I've already got the tire bolted up, got the spare tire up there. So I think I'm gonna just go ahead and get this finished out and tacked in. So that'll be the goal for today. I probably won't be able to get a full day in, in on this, but uh, any progress is good progress. So. Here we go. Too close, can't deny Well, several days later and many, many, many interruptions later, I got to continue on the back end here. And I think, I believe we're at a point to where um, I'm just gonna leave it this way until I can get it off the table and really stand back and take a good look at it. I've got these side body line tubes in place. I've got my upper brace tube coming from the tail section up to this tube. I've got these uh, C-pillar tubes done. I've got them notched. Driver and passenger side done. Everything looks the same. I measured several times before I tacked things in. 
And uh, the only thing I have left to do is lift up that spare tire and put it back up there and make sure it clears these tubes and I've got enough width. I believe I do. Um, I moved these tubes outward a little bit so I could fit a true 40 inch tire in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the progress I've made just this afternoon. This is basically all I've gotten done this afternoon, but I finally get to a point where I didn't have any interruptions and I can really focus on this thing. So now after I get the spare tire up there and check that out, uh, I'm gonna drop this axle down, pull that tire off and move on to the front end, get my link geometry set up on the front end and uh, keep moving forward. Here we go. Well, here we are, beautiful morning. Saturday morning in here in the shop, the race of Kings. They just started broadcasting on the television. They're saying the morning prayer and national anthem, getting ready to race. Building on the chassis table is a brand new experience for me. Last time, I know it's a mess, but last chassis I built on this little fab table. The bigger fab table or the chassis table is great specifically because I can throw the engine in there and it's stable and I have a place to mock things up, but it's not so great for suspension because I cannot flex out the suspension, droop it out, etc. Along the same lines, uh, yesterday afternoon, I got this front axle put in place. I've got it centered up. I've got adjusted front to back where I want it, and I am ready to start mocking up links. One of the things I wanted to do was bolt up my unit bearings and throw a tire on here. But again, I did not realize that the chassis table is in the way for the tire for my steering, my max steering angle, trying to place my lower link chassis tables in the way so what I've done is I've bolted up my alignment jig to this unit bearing and then I taped up a cardboard box that represents the offset the inside of the tire at the width of a 40 inch tire and now I have a reference to where the tire would be when I steer lock to lock. And what I've learned is this lower link has got to be as far to the inside or center of the axle as possible to get the maximum steering angle, which we already knew, but these spider track knuckles, <laughs> I didn't realize they could steer so far. I mean, 50 degrees, they say, is what they advertise, and that's a shit ton of steering angle. And I don't think most racers run a full 50 degrees because I would think that if you ran a 50 degree angle and you had that steering at full lock and you bump the throttle you would for sure bust a u-joint so at this point what I'm doing is just referencing my janky jig here and putting my lower link as far to the inside as I possibly can and everything's just going to get tacked in so when I pull the chassis off the table, I can actually bolt up the tire and steer this thing lock to lock and get some dis decent steering angle out of, out of it. Right now, my goal is to get about 42 to 45 degrees, and I think that's more than enough. On the Dana 60 over there, on the Rock Buggy, I think I'm getting somewhere around 35, which is a hell of a lot more than I got on my old Toyota axle. So 45 degrees on this axle would be a substantial amount more than what I'm used to. And I think that's a good safe bet for making U-joints live. That's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna mock up this, uh, the front four link, get everything tacked in, 
set up my mock-up links, and then I am going to start addressing the front end and finishing out the front end. I'll tell you what, there's no more better motivation than having the Race of Kings Ultra 4 main race on while you're working on your buggy. I'll tell you that. Anyway, so what I was doing, I was going back and forth on this chassis side lower link mount up here on the front. And what I was trying to do was rotate this link mount upward a little bit so it sort of had more of a ramp because you're going to be hitting rocks rocks are going to be coming in here so in rotating it upward just slightly it would make more of a smoother transition point for a rock coming in the front but what i ran into was that with that link mount rotated upward i couldn't fully get the link bolt out so I had to rotate it back downward again and just little details like that make things a lot easier when you go to put things together now with this lower link mount placement because it's got to be pretty narrow at the chassis side pretty narrow at the axle side it's going to make for a tricky oil pan skid and that oil pan skid needs to be removable. So I'm gonna to have to integrate that oil pan skid into this link mount somehow uh, with plate work, tube work, obviously. But uh, just looking ahead at what I'm gonna be up against. So we got the lower links mocked up and I think my homework paid off my little mock-up box here with the offset on the tire. If I'm doing my measurements and everything's correct with my little box and offset rubbing this lower link, I've got 47 degrees of steering. So I'm really happy with that. If that holds true throughout the build, after I get this thing off the chassis table, I think that'd be great. So we're going to proceed. Now we've got to figure out how to snake some upper links in here. It's going to be fun building these upper link mounts right here on the pumpkin and figuring out what my upper link spread's going to be. I've got plenty of triangulation in the, in the, in the lowers. So the uppers don't need to be triangulated so much. I can have quite a spread between the upper mounts.
All right, we've got our tubes prepped for our upper link mounts. I'm gonna go ahead and tack these in. Frame side, one there, one there. Get those tacked in, then I can start messing with my angles here on the upper link mounts on the axle side. Here we go. Okay, this is where we're at. Keeping the hammers race still on. Uh, it's been a great day. No interruptions. I've been able to focus on this car and this build all day. Watching the race, um, fired up. So what, what I've done so far is I've got this upper link mount cross tube there. I got my tabs just temporarily tacked in place. I went ahead and made, made a mock-up link. Uh, what I ended up doing was sliding this link mount back to make my upper link mount slightly longer than my lower, I mean my upper link lengths, slightly longer than my lower link lengths. We learned, in my opinion, we learned from a couple of videos ago when I did the rear four link that we want the upper link mount to be equal to or slightly longer error on the side of longer you want your upper link mount to be longer than your lower so so far this is exactly uh, where we're at i think we're we're happy with this i've got this front end set at 10 degrees uh positive caster or negative caster, whatever it is, it's, it's lean back, you know what I mean. And with this upper link mount, really what I wanted to do was shoot this gap right here, this window for clearance. And as you can see, obviously the steering pump, it's no worky. Yep. Yeah, that, that has left the chat. So it's either gonna have to come it, it's it's not going to work there. I'm going to have to build my own bracket, get a different bracket. That saga continues, but oh well. That's why we do this. Really, I'm really excited because I still have more up travel. And right now I have the axle set at about a one and a half inch differential. So in other words, right now, this is about one and a half inch lower than full bump would be on the rear axle. So what's cool about this is I can still go up. I have plenty of room to go up. Now, mind you, this is an inch and three quarter temporary link, but I still have plenty of room right there between that frame rail. And I can go up and, and possibly have the same amount of bump or close to in the rear or in the front that I have in the rear. The only wild card to this is the high pinion uh, drive shaft. The high pinion drive shaft comes out really high. It comes out somewhere. It comes out somewhere on that upper one third of the carrier. I mean, it's really high. So I really won't know if this setup is going to work until I get that high pinion carrier in there and get a drive shaft or a mock-up drive shaft to make sure everything clears. But as it sits right now, I feel like this is a really good step forward. Now what I need to do is match this geometry on this upper link to the opposite side. And you can see I've got quite a spread between axle center line. This is axle center. That's where my upper link mount is. Yep. So moving forward, I need to match this upper link geometry on the other side. And for all intents and purposes, I will have a roller. All right, here we go. 
Well, I believe I made some good progress today. So it was a good day. I think we got quite a bit done, or I got quite a bit done. I got a front four link mocked up. I'm I'm really happy with the way it turned out. It's uh it's not finalized. I still gotta I just have mock up upper link tabs here made out of 16 gauge. I've got I've got the real upper link tabs cut and ready to weld up, but I gotta put weld washers on them. I still gotta put weld washers on these upper link uh, frame side tabs or chassis side tabs, but got a lot of stuff figured out. I think uh, I think this is gonna work. It'll party. I really won't know if everything's gonna party until I get this chassis off the table, can really flex out the suspension, strap some tires onto here, turn things lock to lock, and most importantly, get a high nine carrier uh, mock-up drive shaft in here and make sure the drive shaft is happy with all the clearances in these links. Also become really obvious to me that I'm gonna have to do something with this water pump. I think this needs to be connected or I can weld block off plates on here. I think I've seen some guys, they just put a loop on here or I need to weld block off plates on these two ports. I think these are for from the factory for the heater. Um, obviously don't need a heater on this, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I'm brand new to the LS world, so I got to get that figured out. If I do need clearance in here, and uh, need to put a, a loop or something in there, then I'm gonna have to spread these upper links out some more because I'm really close to that, obviously. Other than that, I think uh, I'm really happy with today's progress. It really feels good to be back in the shop and get some work done, done on this thing. Next up will be getting the actual upper link mounts tacked in, TIG welding my weld washers on, and then I'll start working on solidifying the front end here. Until next time, get on the website, buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie, buy a hat, buy one of these mock-up transfer cases. Support the channel, support what we're doing here. Have a good one.